What is up? Inspector Mindblow here. Today we're gonna talk about three NFTs that are gonna help you earn crypto. Two of the games featuring today are revolutionary up-and-coming NFT gaming projects that might just change the whole course of the gaming industry. And the third game is a battle royal and it has pretty graphics so all in all it's a win-win so if you're not subscribed already subscribe and hit that like button in the face it literally takes you half a second and it means so much to me it means so much for the channel and for the growth so go down there hit that little like button i'm super excited about the first game i want to talk about today it's called Illuvium and let me elaborate let's start by watching the trailer together and see what the graphics are like see what the gameplay is like So, so each one of these guys here you see are similar to Pokemon, whereas you go out in the world, you catch them, you gotta catch them all, I guess, and then you either sell them or you let them battle it out and the winner gets a profit, right, in crypto. Illuvium. Fight for E. Look, I gotta say, breathtaking. Graphics look freaking phenomenal. If the game plays like it should play, it's definitely gonna be a big, big win. Now, why is this game so revolutionary? What, what, what's new about the Pokemon concept? <laughs> well, there is so much new here. First of all, this is a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization. So it doesn't have a hierarchy. It doesn't have a boss. It doesn't have the normal business structure. It has the new business structure. So explain very simply what is a DAO. A DAO is like a vending machine ordering its own products after it gets empty and then paying on its own for said products. And then people staking the coins for said vending machine vote for which items are gonna go on the shelf next. Pretty much that's like very very simply explained. <laughs> DAO contracts, smart contracts, can be as simple or as complex as they need to be. So now we have that out of the way, you won't have to actually pay for the alluvials, for the NFT alluvials to be able to play the game. Obviously if you're a whale and you just want to buy the most expensive holographic alluvial NFT there is, you can. And hopefully there's going to be matchmaking where those kinds of whales will fight similar kinds of whales and people who want to play for free get to fight people who also play for free so it all kind of makes sense in a matchmaking perspective right if you want to play for free though you, you can obviously you'll be able to go out in the world and catch tier zero illuvials for absolutely free then you can sell them to lazy whales who just don't want to grind so there's also a couple ways to earn money for completely free then you don't have to even sell them you can let them battle it out in the arena and as you win battles you also earn crypto their native coin aka ilv so soon they will have their own decks You'll be able to buy land and so much more. Pretty much all of the fees from all that go to a sort of pool inside the smart contract and said pool is going to buy up the ILV tokens at some points predetermined in the smart contracts, keeping the buying pressure very high and discouraging people from selling their coins. But apart from the buying pressure, a certain percentage of said pool will be delivered to the staking holders. So there's 7 million coins right now and there will be 10 million coins in total. Started a few months ago and the staking will end. The staking started a few months ago and the staking will end in three years, 2024. So until then, you can freely stake your ILV tokens. One of the founders of ILV, of Illuvium, had to say about them being a DAO. As the, the founder or, or the co-founder or whatever, don't have the power. The power goes back to the players and not just the governance model, which, which I'll, I'll go into, but as you're saying, we built this, the, the tokenomics and, and the way that the revenue mechanics work. Uh, all of the different functions 
in, in the game where you spend money on, whether it be traveling to new regions, curing shards, uh, your your exchange fees, enhancements, all of all of these different little things that uh, that people are putting money into, go into a vault, and then that vault will every now and again it will buy ILV off the market, which creates this enormous buy pressure for uh, and, and it's literally in in the liquid markets of either sushi or, or whatever. Amazing. Just sounds freaking amazing. I for sure want to make a more in-depth video about this because Illuvium definitely deserves uh, an independent video on its own. So we'll do that probably this week. So be on the lookout for that. But going on to game number two. Now the sandbox is looking like a Minecraft type game where you'll be able to own uh, virtual plots of land and people are already buying land like crazy. The cent token is already popping off 0.8 dollars right now with a market cap of over 700 million dollars, fully diluted market cap, almost two and a half billion dollars. Obviously in total there's almost a billion sand tokens with a total supply of three billion, so only 30% have been minted so far. Now let's not talk about the tokenomics too much as I want to keep this more gameplay style based. I gotta say, as excited as I am for Illuvium, the sandbox seems like a very, very interesting project. It's totally different from Illuvium, right? Illuvium is more like a Pokemon style based game where you have the 3D world, but then you also have uh, the sort of 2D slash 3D arena style battles. But in the sandbox, it lets people create their own games. That's totally different, right? All the games that are going to come out are going to be totally different from one another. And hopefully all of them are going to succeed. Many of them will, for sure. But basically what the sandbox allows you to do is create all these little creatures and structures and everything and make them an NFT and then sell them on the market for sand tokens. While also being able to own virtual plots of land that you also pay with sand tokens. Wait, is this God? Yes, it is God. Okay, so you're playing God. So he is creating a map right now. This is the launch trailer for the sandbox, by the way, from a stay that way until God leveled up. Turn to crypto. So many maps. So all of this is saying is that anyone can make their own map, their own little game, their own level inside the game, whatever you want to call it. However you see it, the only limit is your imagination. There's a lot of negativity uh, surrounding sand and the sand token and the sandbox game for some reason. There's really good videos on YouTube going really in depth into this game and into the tokenomics and into everything it does, which I'm definitely not, not going to do in this video since I'm going to cover three games and I already spent so much time on covering the first game because I'm just super excited about Luvium. But I think all the hate is uh, uncalled for as this is a brand new concept and I don't understand that in, in the crypto space where people hate on other cryptos that they don't own. So my crypto is awesome, your crypto is terrible. No man, all cryptos are amazing. All blockchain projects are amazing. All of them are doing something awesome, something totally unique. So why not just support each other, right? Basically, as I see the sandbox, it's Kind of like a Minecraft slash Roblox style game where you have this platform, this game, right? And then inside the game, you can make little mini games, you can make whatever you want. That's kind of the whole premise of Minecraft. Minecraft was only successful because it let people make whatever they wanted. So they made a lot of cool stuff. And then other people wanted to play that cool stuff. That's how it worked. That's the success of Minecraft. And I should know, I built a channel only on Minecraft videos. So believe me when I say this game not only does it have potential, this game will be super fun to play. Might be an, uh, might be an unpopular opinion, but hey, take it as you will. Moving on to game number three. The, this is the third game I told you about in the beginning uh, that's not as revolutionary as you would think. Uh, it, it is a crypto game, so it's amazing on its own. It's revolutionary just because of the fact that it's a crypto game. But inside the space, it's a, it's, it's a battle royale where when you win, you earn crypto. Now, the graphics look real nice, and the game is called Hodl God. How can you not like this game? I mean, I already love it. Freaking Hodl God. It's a battle royale game with pretty graphics. Uh, as you can see, you have a bunch of different magic attacks you can do. You have swords, you have bows. Kind of reminds me of Naraka Blade Point, if you guys know that game. But basically, the journey begins. You must find and collect all the immortal shards, combine them. After the ritual is complete, a quest for only the most worthy warriors you must embark on. If successful, you will be one of the very few to call themselves one of the immortals. So I think this means when you win the battle royal. 
Good luck on your endeavors and may the gods be with you. So for those of you who don't know what a battle royal is, it's basically 60, 100 people, doesn't matter how many, get thrown into an arena. The last one standing, the last one to live is the winner. And you can play this game right now, start earning crypto right away. Uh, you definitely can't earn $100 a day with this game. But with Illuvium, with the sandbox, it'll definitely be possible, especially in the beginning of the game and hopefully even later on as you get more and more imaginative with the things you can do in game. Because I don't think people realize at this point what all of this allows you to do, like the, the DAO concept of video gaming. A video game being a DAO is amazing on its own. The main problem with video games right now is the whole hierarchy process and from microtransactions to all the other stupid stuff that's destroyed so many games over the years. Imagine, just hypothetically, let's say a game you really like. What do you like? Do you like to play FIFA? You like to play NBA? You like sports games? Or maybe you're more into the Battle Royale, you like Fortnite, PUBG? Or maybe you're more into, more into the MMO space, like World of Warcraft, Elder Scrolls Online. It doesn't matter. Whatever game you like, and probably at some point you were like, ah, I just wish it had that one feature, man. They just don't want to do it. It's not profitable for them. In a DAO, you can make that suggestion. If you're a stakeholder, you can make that suggestion and the whole organization will listen to you, consider it, and if it's a good suggestion, they will take it. So that's a DAO for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.